It's a shame that being a straight white Northern European dude means I don't get a special holiday every year celebrating the time when my country was liberated from people like me, but I can always take solace in the fact that the entire world literally exists for my benefit. And if I'm bored I can just go sail to some exotic land and take all their spice and proceed to not use it because it smells weird. And it's also gratifying to know that the current nostalgic wave of retro early 3D styled games is squarely aimed at appealing to me and evoking all the classic PC gaming golden age FPSs I played the shit out of in the 90s. But at the same time it also makes things impossibly awkward if I don't like them. Because I mean who the hell else is going to appreciate its heavily pixelated brown textures besides scat fetish Lego enthusiasts? We made this just for you, cry the creators like a grandmother brandishing a new Christmas scarf, except it's made entirely of brownish grey wool and it's got the word retard stitched into it because that's the kind of transgression you 90s kids find hilarious, isn't it? Thanks grandma, I'll play it every day. Oh god, why did I say that? Now I need to make sure it's in my Steam recently played list every time she fucking comes round. So we've had our nostalgic Doom ripoff with Proteus and our nostalgic Blood ripoff with Cultic, but we still didn't have our nostalgic Hexen ripoff, so here comes Graven to fill the niche. Named after how a road accident victim with a speech impediment might describe the drab coloured commercial vehicle that hit him, yeah sorry that's the best I've got, in Graven we play as a bearded murder priest who had a daughter or something who some other murder priest tried to murder, getting really confused as to why we'd have a problem with that. I mean we're murder priests dude, you should have read the sign over the door. And after a big kerfuffle we're exiled from our order and find ourselves lost in a stricken land full of death, monsters and brown. To its credit Graven gets the mandatory 90s FPS sewer level out of the way right at the start and then just in case you miss it proceeds to carve the rest of the game out of shit. I only remembered the whole plot point with the daughter because at the end of the first act there was a cutscene with your boy going, this land was safe but I was no closer to learning the fate of my daughter. And I was all like, oh yeah, plots, I remember those. I completely forgot about the fucking daughter thing because I spent the last 12 hours going back and forth across greenish brown wildernesses trying to figure out where in John Romero's forsaken hair care regimen I was supposed to go next. Thanks for reminding me of the plot by informing me that it hasn't budged forward a fucking inch. See, Hexen was a pioneer in that it was one of the first FPSs to embrace hub-based exploration and backtracking, but this was also in the era when FPS level designers fell back on key hunting every time their Mountain Dew glass was empty, and Hexen was all like, what if, instead of having to backtrack across a semi labyrinthine map looking for the door opened by the key you just found, you had to backtrack across NINE of the fuckers, and that's the spirit Graven is keen to evoke. All progress was tainted by the knowledge that it was only a matter of time before my next walking tour of the entire fucking game to date, trying to figure out where the cocking turtle key goes. Turned out it was underwater. Oh sorry, I was kind of getting the message to stay out of water because it was the colour of diarrhoea, and visibility was poor and there was no air and it was full of huge fleshy carnivorous eels trying to start a conversation with my enormous knob. I get the sense that Graven is one of those games that tries to hide behind the deliberately retro thing. Of course there's no map, where do you think you are, fucking Six Flags? In our day we drew our own map and that's how we liked it. Oh I expect you wanted a fucking objective marker instead of having to deduce where to go from dialogue and context clues like we expect you to have more intelligence than a chimp with a banana dangling in front of its face. I might give you more of a pass Graven if the dialogue in question wasn't usually along the lines of go to that weird house behind the bike sheds when said house is in the middle of a hedge maze and the bike sheds are locked by a machine that's missing three gears, two of which are in different buildings and one in a particularly hard to notice borough of Inverness. But fine, okay, I mean Hexen wouldn't even have had that amount of text. What I'm pretty sure nobody liked in any era of gaming is the combat being shitty. And Graven can't banana dangle its way out of that one. Initially it's melee focused, with our boy having to see off shambling groups of zombies with corrective taps of the walking stick, which isn't much fun because enemies don't so much attack as briefly get seized by the urge to do the thriller dance, and if you're close enough to read their name tag you just lose a third of your health. Later on the combat gets more range focused, you'll know because you'll be hit in the face with a blast of toxic snot from the fucking flying lizard thing 15 miles away that you mistook for a speck of dust on your contact lens. Your own ranged weapons start with a wrist mounted dart launcher with all the satisfying sound and action of a queefing stick insect, and a variety of crossbows and ballistas that for god knows what reason all take up four slots on the quick select panel. Which doesn't mean you can't use them, you just have to pause the game and rearrange your whole inventory every time you need to switch. And I have no clue why this has to be the case, unless it's to prevent your healing potions from getting bed sores. There's no room on the quick select for more than one of the actually useful guns, since I also needed room for my sword and potions and it wouldn't let me unequip my walking stick or my magic book. Yeah, while we're on the subject, Graven severely overestimates how much I'd want to use that fucking magic book. Oh I see you're still full on mana restoring potions, but here's some more anyway in case you miss the fact that mana refills are coming out of the fucking walls. And then your magic fire attack feels more like very threateningly holding out a cigarette lighter. I think overall Graven illustrates that nostalgia is all very well, but there are certain quality of life improvements I'd rather not go back to life without. Like a colour palette that means you can tell the difference between explodey barrels and the regular kind, when you're blindly smashing up the furniture looking for potions in low light conditions. Level design that's more intuitive than trying to identify rabbit turds in a bowl of chocolate covered raisins. Incredibly dramatically introduced boss fights that do more than just sit there while you systematically carve off their 17 purple tits. As LP Hartley once wrote, the past is a foreign country, presumably one of the ones where you can only buy music on cassette tapes and women aren't allowed to own shoes. It's nice to visit now and then, but one soon grows tired of being woken in the morning by the musical trill of dial-up modems. <laughs>